Ask the Messengers, the program that deals with substance abuse, real people telling real stories. Hosted by Pastor Lester Lewis, co-host Charlize Wilkerson and Leroy Carey. Produced by David Humphreys. Where there is addiction, there is a chance for recovery. We're trying to help save lives on Ask the Messengers. Welcome to Ask the Messengers. My name is Pastor Lester Lewis, and I am your host for the, the, for the show today. And listen, we are excited about what God is going to be doing and what this show is all about. This show is about real people going through real life experiences. Uh, now listen, addictions is something that in which all of us at, at one point or another come in contact with, whether it's us personally, or whether it's a family member, friend, or whether it's someone, a coworker, we, we, we at some point, addictions enter into our lives. And so, uh, and the effects of what addictions will do. Uh, and, and so we want today to just hear, we're going to be hearing some real life stories, some real life testimonies, some real life messages of what people have gone through. Uh, but here's what I love. I love that the fact they've gone through it. They, they didn't stay in it. They're not still there. They're going, they've gone through it. And so with God's help, they've been able to be delivered from whatever addiction they are struggling, they've been, they were struggling with. And so today, we, we want you to know that, uh, that Ask the Messenger is not scripted. It's, it's not a show in which we have actors and actresses. Uh, it is real people who have gone through real life circumstances. And so we just want you to know that there is going to be today some great testimonies, some great uh, stories that are being shared. So grab a friend, grab a family member, call somebody, tell them right now, tune in, uh, because we have something that you absolutely need to hear. And so we're going to hear a testimony right now of someone who went through and their lives were changed. Well, was my drug of choice, hell. At first, when I was trying to hide it, I was doing drugs. But when drugs started doing to me, I was unable to hide it. I grew up with a with a tight family, but after a while they noticed something different and I could no longer hide it no more. I really didn't care about working. I was trying to find ways and means to find the next one because my body was craving for the next one. What made me quit, well, I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. I tried many things, but I really didn't take it serious. But this, this day here, I'm trying to save my life, so I'm taking it serious. But I spent a lot of time in jail. I was going from jail to the streets, from streets to jail. After 33 years in jail, being 50 plus years, I no longer wanted that life no more. When I came close to OD, I didn't know where I was at. I didn't know what I was doing. And when I came through, it was very frightening. But it still wasn't my bottom because I kept using. I would suggest not to, not to pick up the first one because it could lead you on a path that you never want to go. I'm a beginner, I'm a newcomer. Mm -hmm. But uh, people showed me a different way, and today I'm trying to save my life, and next week I have 30 days. All right. Listen, I am not on this show or in this show by myself. I, I've got a co-host today, and again, I've got a brother who absolutely is just one of God's great, great vessels that he has used, uh, not only for in his life, but also in the life of others. Uh, Mr. Leroy Carey. Leroy, how's it going today, man? How you doing, uh, Pastor Lewis? Can't it's complain, great, sir. It's Can't great, complain. It's great being here. I, uh, I'm i really excited about the program today. I'm excited about our guests. Uh, we have on the program today Laura, who has uh, 11 years in the recovery community. Welcome, Laura. And, and Lamar, who has 11 years in the recovery community. And we're going to uh, try to discuss the amends and and things that happened during our recovery. Uh, the amends, you know, we did a lot of harm to people in our addiction, especially to the community and to our families. And uh, we just want to give you a little insight on what amends and apologies are. Uh, with that, uh, I'd like to ask Laura, what was your drug of choice? Um, crack, marijuana, alcohol. And Lamar, what was yours? Fantasy and across the board, whatever you may name, that moved my spirit and my soul. All right, Lamar, can you, can you elaborate on what, what is fantasy? Uh, At an early age, uh, where I was raised, 
during the time of the early 50s in the Brewster projects. Mm -hmm. People were driving Cadillacs and people moving back and forth, hookers on one side, drugs on the other. So it began, it, be, it started back then. Right. So you're talking about you, you, things that you saw and you, you desired to have. Correct. All right, all right. Uh, Laura, tell, tell me, uh, what made you get started in the first place? Well, uh, I had a, a hard childhood. Um, both of my parents were uh, addicts, and uh, I was in foster care. And by the time I uh, made it back to my family, I was 12 years old. And uh, my addiction actually started then. I started drinking and uh, hanging out with the people in the neighborhood. Okay. Uh, Lamar, tell us... Uh what what made you you know you uh, kind of elaborated on it already about the uh, the illusion of looking and seeing things that's not real. Uh, tell me how did this affect the relationship you had with your family? Well, the, my family was uh, square working individuals. And I mean square working, they had jobs, they wrote numbers. Now, let me explain the difference. When you writing numbers and selling whiskey, it was like a square thing back then and had a place of business on Hastings Street. So I was more or less bred into that at an early age, but, but my parents wanted me to go to school to become a lawyer, a doctor, a professional person because they didn't want that generation or that period of time to reflect on where they came from. Laura, tell 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 me something. Uh, tell me a frightening experience you had while you were using. Well, uh, one night I was out and uh, stopped at the gas station and uh, this guy approached me and uh, he had drugs and I went back to the car with him and he pulled a, a shotgun on me and I uh, at that moment I had to fight for my life that day. Uh, I got shot, and uh, thank God, you know, uh, for uh, the neighbors who heard me screaming, they called the police, and the police pulled up, I mean, just right on time, because I could have lost my life that day. So that was uh, the most frightening experience that I went through. Lamar, give me an experience of uh, the, the frightening, something that happened that was detrimental while you were using drugs. Well, Leroy, there was many quite a few, but I could name three right off the bat. August the 17th, 1977, the same day Elvis Presley died, I got shot in the head. I can never forget it. One king died and one king lived, that was me. But I didn't continue. I felt inside of me to continue on in the same journey, in the same path of destruction for a long period of time. And numerous other things had occurred. The second time I got shot was in the chest. The third time was in the hand. So if you start to name in different things that occurred, I've been li living risky across the line for a long time. Quite naturally, I used for 40 years straight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and Laura, what effect did, did this have on, on you know, your community and on your kids and on your family, period? Well, uh, it had a real detrimental uh, effect. Uh, my children were, of course, mad at me. Uh, my uh, grandmother uh, kind of disowned me. She stopped letting me come to the house. Uh, she would give me money through the mailbox and wouldn't even open the door for me. You know, and uh, I haven't seen my daughter uh, since she was two years old, and she's now 14. And uh, that uh, that's, was a real uh, detrimental experience for me mm. with my family. They don't want to be bothered with me. Okay. Mm. Uh, we're going to turn this back over to Pastor Lewis, and we'll be right back. All right. Listen, as I told you, this is not scripted. These are not these are not actors or actresses. This is actually uh, lives. These are th this is real life where where they've gone through some things. And, and, and we've heard uh, they, uh, both of the our, our guests, our panelists, they've been they've been through some things. They've been shot. They've been uh, at the brink where the family don't want to be bothered with them. Listen, I, I know there's someone out there who's hearing this and can relate to exactly what they're going through. Now, listen, we're going to be.
Uh, we're going we, we're gonna to return in just a moment with more from our panel. I'm Artesia Washington, and I'd like to welcome you to Irvine Head Injury, where restoring you to your previous level of functioning is our goal. We offer services such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech and language pathology, aquatic therapy, massage therapy, and counseling. An automobile accident is an unfortunate event. If you feel that you or a loved one can benefit from our services, you can be reached at 248-415-2500. We look forward to hearing from you. God's World, a Detroit institution at West 7 Mile in Schaefer says, get them while they last. The Obama's 2017 commemorative calendar is going fast. Get your church supplies, communion cups, pine envelopes, Bibles, inspirational books by top authors. Call in your orders at 313-862-8220. Shop online at godsworldsuperstore.org. God's World, for all your inspirational needs. Thank you for tuning in to Ask the Messengers. We need your financial support to keep this program on the air. Would you please send your tax-deductible donation to Greater Love Christian Center? Attention, Ask the Messengers. 18400 Schaefer Highway, Detroit, Michigan, 48235. And for online donations, please visit our website at www.askthemessengers.com. What was my drug of choice? Crack cocaine. I was nine years old when I first tried drugs. It ruined my relationship. It drugs ruined my relationship with my, with my family and myself. Um, I separated myself from them. I isolated myself. I lost my job due, due to drugs. I was stuck on drugs. The pain, the pain of, the pain of not having the love, the love and connection with my family and my friends. I was stabbed one time and I almost lost my life. And, um, due to drinking and drugging and uh, I'm here today. I was joined join the um, fellowship and um, just learn, how, learn the process of recovery and learn how to change it from the inside out and not from the outside in. Welcome back to Ask the Messengers. I'm Pastor Lester Lewis. And again, we have been going through this thing. And man, I'm telling you, these stories and these testimonies are really, uh, they're really inspirational. And uh, my, my co-host with me today is Brother Leroy Carey. And Leroy, I tell you, man, uh, I, I, some of this brings you to tears, but it also helps you to know that there is hope, that it ain't over until, until God says it is. And, and for, for, for many of these, they have seen God bring them through. That's that is that is so true, uh, Pastor Lewis. Uh, we we have saw the ugly side of addiction. We have saw the uh, the goodness of God. Uh, we are the only people who have lived two lives in one lifetime, <laughs> and we are just so grateful yeah. to God to that we can still uh, make amends and let people know that that we can bring back something that was taken. Uh, some things we just can't bring back, but through the grace of God and his work, we'll, we'll carry this message. You know, I just wanted mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, we, we need to make amends to so many people. And I just wanted to ask Laura, uh, if right now you had a chance to apologize to someone, would you do it? Uh, yes, I would. Yes, I would. And it would be my, uh, will be my daughter. You know, I, um, uh, it's like I gave her away for drugs, you know, and, and, and I just let her go in the system and, uh, I didn't fight for her and, uh, she's the main person in my life that I really want to, uh, make an amends to. I feel your pain, yeah. Laura. Yeah, we feel uh, that. you know, uh, God has a way, a funny way of working things out. Uh, Lamar is, uh, we, as you know, uh, we've done a lot of harm to people. And if you had a chance right now to apologize to someone, would you do it? Yes, I would. Numerous of times since uh, 2005, since I started this process and this journey here, I've 
been making amends towards my son. My son is 34 years of age. Uh, we had a ordeal to happen last year, and he brought back all the fire, all the things that I'd done, which was like I didn't walk him to school. I didn't show him how to ride a bike. And just normal things, and I mentioned to him, I was so sorry. I, 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 whatever I could do to uh, make it our relationship, you know, heal, to start to heal in this relationship here. And I have tried numerous of times and constantly until the day you're ready to change. Nothing happens without change. So you have to prepare yourself be ready for that individual when the time is right. Whenever he comes to me, if yes. it's five years from today, if it's tomorrow, I'll be ready. Mm -hmm. Through God's mm -hmm. grace and mercy, through God's spirit, you know, for one person touching the other, from my heart touching his heart, right. through love, because this is what the only thing that we have today is love to, to join this relationship. You know, uh, Leroy, and, and, uh, and certainly to the panels. Listen, you guys, uh, in the making amends, I hear, I hear that it, it, it's not it's not people who are far off from us. It is those who are the closest to us yes. that that are hurt the most, and those are the ones who. Uh, the, when when addictions come, those are the ones who are mm. who receive the collateral damage of uh, the that addiction. Yeah, mm. and so true. and so I hear you know uh, she wants her daughter and, and her son. I mean these these are I mean these are these are close relationships, and mm. and that's that's and 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 it affects their lives as well. You know you know Pastor Lewis as as you are, are speaking. Uh, you know, most of the time, the people that we hurt are the people closest to us. Uh, it's very seldom that I will go outside and hurt a stranger. Uh, you know, a, a stranger uh, might, but see, when you start taking pride, when you start taking uh, love, and when you start taking people's uh, just out and out care about you, when you start taking that from them, you have created something that's the, the inner part of most recovery people are the emotional scars that we have from not being able to tell our people we're sorry. I can never tell my mother I'm sorry because my mother is deceased. So the only way that I can keep her uh, in my, it, let her know that her son is doing well is to keep doing well. That's right. Yeah, uh, that's you know, don't, don't that's just all of a sudden, uh, that's why I stay clean, not only for myself, mm -hmm. but for my family. My yeah. family, my yeah, mother true. is looking down from up above, thank God, and, and saying, there is my son. The same as with Laura, her grandmother, is, is so proud of the way she is now. Uh, Lamar, who, is, uh, who I've known for 50 years, uh, who went from, uh, uh, from where he was right, until gracious. where he is now. Uh, nice. Lamar, please, you can't interrupt, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, just, just before we close, I'd like to ask Laura, uh, Tell me, if you had to tell somebody what they could do not to, uh, 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 to, to get on this path, what would suggestion would you give to someone who is trying to quit using right now? Uh, I would tell them uh, not to pick up the first one. You know, that's, that's always the beginning. Uh, and that's one of uh, the cliches that we use in the recovery process not to pick up the first one, you know, and then you don't have to worry about anything else. And I'm uh, uh, so grateful to God, you know, that I uh, never had, haven't had the desire in, in 11 years to pick up the first one. And so that would be the most important thing. Not what about you, Lamar? One. Tell me. Seek help. Cry out for help. Your pastor, rabbi, church, rehab. You must 
open up. You must give back. You must cry out for the help if you're going to receive help. You cannot get help without asking for help. You must reach out at all costs to get the help that you may need. And that's from the point of the day that you walk into these rooms for the rest of your life. This is an ongoing process and it takes the rest of our lives. So we work to, to get better. You know, I appreciate you saying that, uh, Lamar. Uh, you know, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, we are so grateful to God through his grace and his mercy we have seen we have seen things that normal people just wouldn't believe hmm. and uh he has brought us through and we want to thank this program and thank pastor lewis for not only uh giving us the opportunity to share our experience uh with someone but to try to help someone along the way uh this is uh uh, living two lives in one lifetime, and it's just only through the grace of God. Amen. All Amen. right, listen, we've got final comments on the way. Uh, don't go anywhere. Uh, please stay tuned. God's World, a Detroit institution at West 7 Mile in Schaefer says, get them while they last. The Obama's 2017 commemorative calendar is going fast. Get your church supplies, communion cups, pine envelopes, Bibles, inspirational books by top authors. Call in your orders at 313-862-8220. Shop online at godsworldsuperstore.org. God's World, for all your inspirational needs. I'm Artesia Washington, and I'd like to welcome you to Irvine Head Injury, where restoring you to your previous level of functioning is our goal. We offer services such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech and language pathology, aquatic therapy, massage therapy, and counseling. An automobile accident is an unfortunate event. If you feel that you or a loved one can benefit from our services, you can be reached at 248-415-2500. We look forward to hearing from you. And we are back uh, here at Ask the Messengers. Listen, it is our final comments time. And, and listen, we got so much. We went we so much. Look, if we could just, Brother Leroy, if we could just have our panel just kind of just kind of encapsulate and just give a brief uh, comment of, of, of something that they uh, that they would like to share with some of those viewers or some of those who whose family members may be going through. Uh, how, how do you think this is this is impacting those who are watching right now? Oh, I'm, I'm sure that you know it, we have really great success stories uh tell me tell me right quick lamar tell me what are you doing right now at the present time i'm a consultant with the funeral home i work for uh andrews funeral home i go into people's homes into rehabs and places for people to start to understand about death as well as when you live, you got to know how to die. And that's a touchy situation, but nevertheless, uh, you if you start making arrangements now for your life okay. through this program. Okay, thank you, Lamar. Uh, Laura, tell us something right now that you're doing right now. Well, uh, right now I'm... Uh, being a homemaker, um, I'm disabled. I worked in the OR, uh, and I've had a lot of jobs. I've done a lot of harm to my body. So um, now I'm just trying to heal. Uh, I'm practicing new hobbies. Uh, I go to church. I sing in the choir. I praise, dance. Praise uh, and uh, I spend a lot of time at home. I like gardening and uh, rebuilding relationships with my uh, two sons, who I spend uh, a lot of time with. My youngest son actually takes care of me. So, you know, I gave, I, I'm giving, I'm giving back through my sons. And uh, that's, that's it. Okay. That, that's, that sounds great. You know, we just want to say that uh, it might not, you might not think it's a way out, but we have faced your dilemma and we found a way out. Uh, we want to go back to Pastor Lewis, and we want to thank God for Pastor Lewis and for Ask the Messenger program. 
Pastor Lewis. Yeah. Amen. But Leroy, thank you so much. And, and certainly to both of our, our panel guests, uh, listen, your, your stories are, are touching and, and we thank God so much for you. Uh, and listen, this is what this is what Ask the Messengers is really all about. Uh, again, we, we told you this is these are no actors. These, this is real these are real people. They're real stories. They're real circumstances that they've gone through. Uh, and, and so but you also see this, that there is life on the other side of addictions. And so uh, what, what, what we want you to know is that uh, as you uh, watch this program, uh, this program is being made available uh, and, and helpful uh, because of those of you out there who, who see this as being a, a place of help and is willing to sow a seed. And so won't you sow a seed into this good ground, the good ground called Ask the Messengers, uh, to help us continue programming like this going out, continue help uh, to, to, to share the message of, of deliverance and, 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 and to see people's lives change. That's what Jesus was all about. He wanted to see people's lives change. And, and so uh, today, we just the, the information is there on the screen. Just make sure you just, just take a moment, pray, ask the Lord, Lord, how can I help? And sow a seed into uh, this ministry known as Ask the Messengers. And so as we prepare our clothes, uh, I, I just want to share with you, uh, we talked about making amends today, which is so important, uh, which is literally about asking for forgiveness. And, and so uh, Jesus said something profound. Uh, he said, listen, if you're at the altar and you're praying and you have not asked your brother for forgiveness, he said, leave your offering there. Don't even no, leave it there. Go to your brother and, and, and ask him for forgiveness uh, because it is, it is not in. And here's the thing. It is not in the fact of whether or not uh, the, the forgiveness is is received. It's the fact that you realize and recognize uh, that you need to ask. And so one of the things that we want you to know here uh, on this program is that uh, they're, they're not just the, the, the individuals here, their stories, they're not just going through the motions. Uh, you know, I, I believe in prayer and practice. Uh, the Bible says Jesus uh, called a woman, they, they called a woman who was uh, caught in the act of adultery. Uh, they tried to stone her, tried to put her to death. Uh, Jesus uh, confronted though her accusers and said uh, they began to walk away and he said, hey, who among you, uh, listen, who is without seeing cast the first stone? And here's what's so important. They all walked away. And then Jesus said, go and sin no more, which simply means there is a portion where we must put something new into practice. All right, let's pray and let's give the Lord the final word on this. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you so much. Your will be done right now in the lives of those who are struggling. Thank you for your, your protection, your grace, your mercy. Right now, Father, someone's helped by these words. Someone has been blessed by these words. Heal someone's heart as a result of today's program. And now, Father, we also thank you that those who are even family members, let them also feel your grace in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you again on Ask the Messengers.